Production. Welcome everybody to Taking On Sports. I am TD. That is Greg. Greg, how you doing today, man? I am good. How are you today, sir? I'm pretty good. Pretty good. Beautiful fall day here in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, good weekend of football so far. Baseball playoffs started this week. Uh, it's that good time of year for sports, man. Uh, oh, yeah. NBA, NHL, right around the corner. Uh, it's a great time of year. So uh, yes, let's hop into our football. We'll start as usual. Uh, no big NBA trades this week to <laughs> throw us off. Um, we'll start with the local boys, of course. Alabama goes into College Station and wins a tough one. Ugly game, 26-20 <laughs> over the Aggies. Got outplayed in the first half. Um, and then the defense really stepped it up second half. Um, you got to give credit, Kevin Steele, Nick Saban, and the defensive players, man, against both now Ole Miss and then A&M uh, shut them down three points each in the second half to clinch these yeah. games. Uh, talk about the game yesterday, Greg. You know, uh, it was – we thought it was going to be an ugly game. It was an ugly game. Uh, I mean, that's just what this game has turned into the last couple of years. Um, took everything, but hey, we went in to a rough, tough environment, and most importantly, we came out with the win. I mean, and the, you know, I just like I said, the defense. I, I mean, I love what they're doing. They seem to have that passion, that pride that energy that just wasn't there for the last couple of years. You know, after um, after Pruitt left, uh, you know, it just wasn't there. It was just something missing, and it seems like that's back. Mm. I mean, they still make mistakes at times, you know, it's still, but, I mean, but it's not a, ever an effort issue. You know that they're giving it all. They're, they're playing hard, and they have a certain pride. They don't want to give up points. We saw that again that second half. I mean, they put it on A&M. I mean, they were getting after Max Johnson like no other. I mean, he looked so frustrated in that second half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a couple then, times he got hit, popped up, and looked like he had having words with a lineman about a just yeah, like what do something. <laughs> yeah, and um, then uh, you know the other thing you like to see too is I mean uh, you know A uh, and M they front they shut down a running game. And He said, Jalen, you're gonna have to beat us with your arm, and he did it. He mm -hmm. went out there and he put up. Best game of his career th thus far, and he had some receivers that really stepped up for him. Mm -hmm. And I think we they're finding some chemistry. They're, he had some confidence in those guys. You know, we brought in Jermaine Burton for a reason. And he's starting to show why we brought him into Tuscaloosa. <laughs> I mean, it was yeah, another guy of the career game, Jermaine Burton. Uh, what three shy of two hundred yards receiving? He was yeah talking that shit all game long. He was letting the Aggies and their fans know it. Um, yeah. Uh, early on, you you kind of wanted. I think early on, I said, "Man, he needs to shut up." After he dropped a kind of a big third down, but he backed yeah. it up the rest of the game. He, he made did. some tough catches, made some big plays, two big, big touchdowns. Play. Um, yeah, like you said, he really showed why we thought we were getting something from Georgia there in the transfer. Um, yes, sir. Isaiah Bond had a big game. Big uh, game. You mentioned Milrow, career game throwing the ball. Um, and like you said, it's huge for. His confidence, uh, the offense confidence, just the the fan base's uh, stress level and confidence going forward when yeah. they can hold us to what like twenty yards rushing total um, right. when you take out sacks maybe, um, and we can go in and throw the ball and win in a tough environment against a defense that was very lauded. You know, a lot of five stars mm -hmm. on that defense too, a very athletic front. Um, and a little shout out to Tommy Rees. He's still, you know, there's still problems. There's still things that we'd like to see. But it seemed like he found a weakness in that secondary that he saw maybe on that Miami game film um, and exploited it. They were picking yeah. on a certain yeah. cornerback. I didn't catch kid's name. Don't want to embarrass him too much. But they were throwing, you know, they had they found their matchups a lot in that game. Yep. Hitting deep balls and intermediate passes. Mm -hmm. Um. So, yeah, great game. You mentioned defense, of course. You're right. Uh, nothing to add to that, really, except, yeah, they found their nastiness again. again. And that's right. what Saban talked about in the offseason. 
exactly was uh finding that edge and that kind of meanness to them and they certainly seem like it and it it's instead of getting dejected when they give up a big play or a score like they seem to have the past few years they, it seems to piss them off and that's what you yeah. miss um exactly yeah those prime era you know those early defenses you know you think about the 2011 defense or the 15 16 defenses if you they gave up a big play or somebody scored on them it yeah. just made them angry yeah yeah exactly. Um, and seem to get back to that. Yeah. And then, you know, the other thing, too, I mean, you know, a lot, lost Malachi more for the game. You know, that's a huge loss. The leader of the back end there. And, mm-hmm. and, and it was in past years, they've been like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, I mean, guys stepped up, did their thing. Yeah, the that great job by see. the guys filling in. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and you hope that that's not uh, someone we – that Long injury term. isn't too bad. Right. Yeah. Uh, Saban said it was a twisted ankle. I've read high ankle sprain, so hopefully you never you can... know with ankles. <laughs> They're so yeah. all over the place. But yeah, you would say maybe hopefully keep him out against Arkansas this week. Uh, yeah. You would think, and then maybe hopefully he can hopefully back to Tennessee. Yeah, um, but yeah, and another you know you're happy about the second half. I mentioned that you know first half looked sloppy again. Yeah. Um, you know after you know an early. Mentioned a big, you know, Burton had a third down drop where we had to set a four field goal on our opening drive instead of, you know, we were moving. Yeah. Um, I think we got, we got what, one other score down 17 10 at half. Um, mm-hmm. And AM was playing better. They were the better team that first half. And they were. Credit to the coach and staff for, you know, everyone who's, you know, a lot of people online shouting down this coach and staff, but they've made now big adjustments in. Two or two biggest conference games so far. Yeah, they have a yeah, whole, uh, whole mm-hmm. different looking team in the second half of both games. Yeah, that I'll it, to play. Yeah, ability. and of course you want to see the team come out on fire to start the game, but yeah, uh, it's it's still huge that they can make those adjustments and change their, right. the not just that, but the players' attitudes. You know that they can come out and not get down by the first half and. Mm-hmm step up in the second half. And like you said, that defense was just vicious. They were just uh, – Max Johnson, like you said, running for his life. And he didn't even have time to run for his life. He just got swarmed. They were just pushing around the Aggie offensive oh, line. Oh, oh. Dallas so Turner's manhandling dudes. He had time in the first half, and they adjusted and got after it, that offensive mm-hmm. line in the second half because they were – in his face. Like he had no time that whole second half at all. Oh, no, yeah. He was dropping back, and as soon as he completed his uh, drop back, he was already, yeah, guys yeah. just pushing their linemen into him, too. Like, they were it was, they were just manned up. Yeah. Um, I guess. Still, I was going to say, yeah, looking at negative size, still penalties. Um, Man. Some a lot frustrating of false ones. <laughs> yeah, we were like three false starts in a row at one point. You had yeah. the, the like damn blindside block call on the, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the that, blocked the field goal, took it back for a touchdown, and get a blindside call. And all right, uh, two things on this one. I think it was kind of a bullshit call. The guy got up beside ball. him and just shoved him. It's not like yeah, the blindside that block. Good. That's meant to on those returns. You know, that's meant to kill those kill where they, they just kill the guy. That's meant to take those out the game. You know, and save those injuries. Right. Exactly. It, it, it was a Dallas Turner ran up beside the dude and shoved him, and he fell over. Yeah, I mean, it was um, unnecessary because the play was already passed. Them, right? Exactly, yeah. But, I mean, come on, a blindside block, really? Like, No, that was a bullshit <laughs> call. It's And, again, yeah, Dallas Turner shouldn't have touched him because he was 15 yards behind the play, and our guy had an escort. He was scoring. Um, yeah. And that would have effectively – that would have put the game, I think, out that of reach. Was, I mean, that was a game right there. It would have yeah. been – gave us a 14-point lead, and it really would have been a, just a killer. Like, it killed their yeah. momentum. Um but you like to see the defense, you know, fought back after Jalen threw a pick. We got it right back. Um, Caleb Downs, he's he's that dude, man. He, um, yeah, he's only going to get better and better in his career here. Um, that he is. But yeah, uh, again, great win uh, for a lot of people that said A and M was, you know, this was their time. They're going to beat them. Uh, you know, pronouncing yeah. the dynasty over again. Again, like not saying this means that we're going to live up to, you know, yours and mine prediction of a national championship this year, but what? Alabama Man. first place in the SEC West right now. Yeah. Hey, they've done since that Texas game, you see progress. 
They, mm-hmm. You know, very end of the USF game, it was ugly, but I mean, the last, when they ran down their last touchdown, they just rushed it up, kept running. That would look decent. Mm-hmm. Second half of the, uh, you know, second half of the uh, Ole Miss game looking decent. Mm-hmm. Most of the, uh, most of the Mississippi State game in the second half yesterday. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, you see progress, you see improvement, and that's all you can really ask for. The night. Yeah. And, you know, on to the next it. one. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, moving on to the other, the big game of the day, the Red River Shootout, and it lived up to the name. Uh, wow. Oklahoma, Texas, back and forth, and the Sooners yeah. pull off a mm-hmm. late win. Um, and everybody, you know, so busy asking if Texas was back, forgot to talk about Oklahoma. Exactly. Um, <laughs> picked off Quinn Ewers, what, two two times, forced a fumble somewhere in there. And uh, at first, like, six minutes, it was like two picks, a fumble. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah, it looked like Oklahoma might run them off the field. Texas stormed back. Oklahoma yeah. stormed back. Texas stormed back from a late deficit. They were yeah. down 10 late, took the lead. Yeah. And then I, Dylan uh, Gabriel marches them right down the field for a, what, last-minute winner. Yeah. Yeah, they uh, – Go ahead. You know, that OU team, like we said, going went into the game. I mean, they there's really no talk about OU at all. Like, mm-hmm. like they weren't – it was like everybody was looking at last year and saying, man, they were so bad last year they got ran off the field in this game. But if you watch OU at all this year, you saw it was a different team. They're much mm-hmm. better. And really haven't played anybody, and that's the biggest thing is who have they played. But in those games where they hadn't played anybody, they were they were doing what they were supposed to do. It looked a lot crisper, and they you know they did it. They did the thing. They you know uh, how they're a top. They jumped up to what number five or six in both polls. So, I mean, they jumped pretty high there. And the the thing is, the way that the Big Twelve is looking, we're probably likely to see this matchup again in December. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Uh, it does not look like they have any serious challengers. Uh, no. <laughs> you know, I think my sleeper team, Baylor, just looked bad. Or, you know, kind of we talked about Texas Tech maybe playing spoiler. No. <laughs> um, yeah, the, it doesn't look, you know, you know TCU is obviously in a rebounding year. Yikes. And, a bad loss. Iowa State and got yeah, dominated. Got, Yikes. And then on the uh, even on Friday night, uh, the team that I thought was gonna be a contender, mm-hmm. K State, that's a bad loss. Losing yeah. Okie State, <laughs> yeah, against an Okie State team that's just not looked good this year. Uh, oh. so, so yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Like you said, Oklahoma jumped up to fifth in the AP poll, uh, seventh in the coaches poll. Um, so yeah, a good win for the Sooners, and we got to look at them yeah. as a legit. Uh, playoff contender now. Oh yeah, um, they could easily run the table. Mm-hmm. At least go into that Big Twelve title game more than likely in a rematch against Texas. But there's a good chance they go into that game undefeated if they keep playing like they have for the first uh, five weeks of the season. Yeah, sure. And uh, that would be a first, right? Those two meeting in the Big Twelve title game, or have they done that? I think they did a couple years ago. Uh, yeah, they did. They did. Uh... Let's see. Um, was it 2018? It was, uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah they did it good. after, yeah, in the 10 man years. Uh, 2018, yeah, they beat Texas by 12. Uh, yeah. Kyler Murray led Sooners. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I would expect to see that one again. And, I mean, if, you know, OU comes in that game undefeated, Texas, um, it's just with the one loss OU, I mean, it definitely should have, for sure, playoff implications. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, because Texas is not out of it. You know, they got the band no, win in there on the resume. And, uh, yeah. you know, this is not a bad loss by any stretch. Not a bad loss at all. So. Uh-uh. Um. Let's see other big games on the day. Uh, let's talk about well, let's talk about a night one. Uh, Notre Dame goes into Louisville and the Cards wow. get him the uh, magic of. I don't think it's Papa John's Stadium anymore, but 
wherever the Cardinals play. Uh, big win for the program. First year coach Jeff Brom. Uh, you know they started five and zero. Didn't look pretty in a couple of those games. Struggled mm-hmm. last week against NC State. People were like, oh, they're going to be overmatched. I think I thought the same. Yeah. And they just kind of bullied Notre Dame all night. They did. Uh, they ran all over Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. Shut down. They completely shut down the Notre Dame offense. Mm-hmm. And really, I mean, it wasn't really. After seven seven, they dominated the rest of the game. Like it wasn't any question. Like there was no time without the man. You know, I expect Notre Dame to come back. They got dominated. Like they didn't. They took the they took the will away from them, <laughs> and on this was six and zero on the year. They're quietly having a heck of a season. It's very under the radar, and they're starting to get a little love now after that win last night. But you know that's uh, much. In his first year, Jeff Brom, he's doing a heck of a job. Came home, and he's doing it. And then uh, what the other Brom. Is an uh, offensive coordinator, so it's a family affair. Came yeah. back to Louisville. So. <laughs> uh, Brian Brom, right? Brian yeah. Brom, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, no, they got a they got a stud at running back back there. Oh, um, he put up yards yesterday. He had. Let's see, where was that at? He let's see, Jordan, t- yeah. 143 yards, two scores. Just yeah, they made uh, Hartman look bad. Um, big first time he's looked terrible all year. Like he looked yeah. Average, yeah, <laughs> terrible. Yeah, just making bad throws, just rush, yeah. getting hit a lot. You know, same thing. Like just getting pushed around that line. Mm-hmm. Um, and now Louisville, you know, they got, they got still some tough, you know, games from the schedule. But nothing but, that uh, says not winnable. Like no, they, certainly they not. The, yeah, they could run the table and it wouldn't shock me. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, the looking at their tough, schedule, yeah, they could absolutely run the table. <laughs> Uh, they don't have to play Florida State, so you know maybe nope. they can get in and play an ACC they're... title game. Yeah, very well. And you have said it. Uh, come, that was your uh, team plan for the state. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> kudos on that. So far, it's looking looking good because that's a that's a good team there. But yeah, I mean the ACC still a little tougher than what folks thought. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, uh, we'll, we'll uh, talk about that. <laughs> The yeah, other we'll, ACC soccer. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. We'll save that for the end of this review because it's <laughs> it's its own thing. Uh, you see, another ranked matchup. LSU went into Missouri and came back. A good comeback win for them. Uh, poor Missouri. They, they had in these games where they trying to beat these SEC big boys and just late cannot pull it out. Yeah. 32 yeah, second great. half points for the LSU Tigers. Uh to get a late win, I got a pick six that sealed it late, uh, despite a great right. effort by uh, is it Brandon Cook? Um, he had a good game. Yeah, uh, four hundred eleven yeah. yards. Yeah, uh, I mean the game but, was exactly what you thought it was going to be—a a shootout mm-hmm. from start to finish. Not much defense, I guess. Uh, you know, LSU had some clutch plays at times to to get mm-hmm. the win, but that defense is still a mess. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they you give got to worry about that D if you're um, an LSU you're fan. fan. Yeah, I mean Jaden Daniels, another outstanding game. You know, two fifty nine, three touchdowns through the air, and what a couple, uh, at a big time on the run. Where's his uh, running stats? He yeah, he also a- ran for hundred thirty yards and a score. Um, See, so yeah, that offense is fine. You know, Brian Kelly's got the offense rolling there in Baton Rouge, but that defense. Yeah. If that if they didn't have rough. those two losses and if they didn't have those two losses on the season, I mean he might still very well could be if he continues with this pace, but he'd definitely be in the Heisman hunt because that mm-hmm. man's putting up stats <laughs> every week. Yeah. Every week. Um Let's see. Uh, other big games. I see. Talked about. Uh, our Maryland will not be beating Ohio State this year. Um, they had them. Uh, good first half. It was tied at yeah. halftime. Uh, and I'm ten nothing like, quick. Yeah, Maryland up ten nothing quick, and it just seemed to kind of piss off Ohio State because then 
Uh, the rest of the way, Ohio State outscored them thirty-seven to seven. Um, yeah. In a big second half, they just leaned on them. They said, you know, they kind of remembered, hey, we're immensely more talented yeah. in this team, and we should yeah. win. Um, Al McCord had a great second half. Yeah, real great. Uh, like one of those kind of things that like, go oh, right. We got Marvin Harrison Jr. We should probably throw the ball to him. Yeah. Um, I'm an, you know, second half, it was just no question. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Georgia stomped Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Um, this is kind of the Georgia team everyone's been waiting for. Yeah. They uh, took it to Kentucky. Obviously, they've been listening to everybody talk, mm-hmm. <laughs> talk about them. Cause it, and you could – going into the game, you could kind of sense it just because the type of offense that Kentucky runs is what Georgia's best to stop in. Mm-hmm. You're knocking out physical Georgia. <laughs> and they don't have near the talent that the Georgia has. So then, that, that wasn't going to work. And uh, Winston is a decent quarterback, but his arm wasn't going to beat Georgia <laughs> yesterday, especially in Athens. It just wasn't going to happen. Maybe no. a little worse than I thought it was going to be. I thought maybe they'd score maybe a little bit more and maybe not give up as many points. But, you know, Georgia showed wh- why they're, they're Georgia and why they're the two-time, two straight national champions. And uh, for, for now, they qu- quieted everybody down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think the big thing was they had a great first half, a good start. They are up 34-7 yeah. to seven at halftime. Um, yeah. You know, Carson Beck played the best game in the Georgia, his best game in the Georgia uniform yeah. so far. Um. Yeah, and you said it. You called it last week. And you just mentioned again there. Kentucky's offensive style just plays right in Georgia's hands, and Georgia has the better athletes. So, um, they uh could kind of yeah, like you said, see that coming. Georgia needed to make a statement. Uh, they did. Um, Kentucky just got to regroup. Uh, not the end of the world for yeah, them. I mean, be fun. Yeah. I, I think um, the Wildcats will be fine. You know, big game this coming up week. I mean, mm-hmm. for both teams coming off a loss, see who wants a, who wants it more. You know, when you got mm-hmm. Missouri, Kentucky, that, that should be a very interesting game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very interesting. Uh, running through the rest of the top 25, Michigan handled Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Uh, Florida State handled Virginia Tech. USC, whew, overtime. Oh. Over Arizona Man. at home, not even in Tucson. Yeah. Uh, no, tr- overtime in LA. Uh, Arizona's on. They got the, they're on the right track. If they can get some athletes there, maybe that move to the Big Twelve will help them somewhat. Oh, I don't know, Arizona's but uh, on the way. Yeah, um, on some right there in Tucson for sure. Yeah. Um, they. Uh, I. I, I so bad that they, I thought, man, I thought maybe they're gonna pull it off there, <laughs> but just man. couldn't, yeah, couldn't complete the win. Um, yeah. Tough loss for them. Uh, at that USC defense, that's just a ticking time bomb. It's got to bite yeah. in the ass here soon. Yeah. Um, staying in LA, UCLA gets upset win over Washington State. Uh, defense just uh, Cam. Uh, Cam Ward and that uh, Washington State offense just played Listen. horribly. Um, For the first time, they looked terrible. They didn't look good at all. Uh-uh. And they didn't have, They just looked – he had a hundred and – only a hundred – only a hundred ninety-seven yards, um, mm-hmm. two interceptions, and not the Washington State that we've seen all year at all. The crazy thing is, is like every – like when that line came out last week, I guess we should have paid attention more. But I was mm-hmm. like, man, there's no way. No, I'm like this Washington State team is looking so good, and yeah. they're they're going into the Rose Bowl. It's not intimidating at all. But man, they UCLA was ready for them. They had a good game plan in place. You know, Chip oh, Kelly wow. had a perfect game plan for it. Mm-hmm. I took the Cougars in the in the picks column on Friday. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was like, I'll I take them, you know, with three and a half on the road, and uh, yeah. did not end well. But um, good win for them. Yeah, big win for the Bruins there. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, there. absolutely. That puts them at uh, four and one. That creates a – that's just a big old log jam in that Pac-12 now. Um, and, uh, right behind the, the big boys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Let's see elsewhere. Where did my scores go? Well, oh, uh, Spectrum. Right you already mentioned my son went out for a second. The North Carolina boy, they're looking mm. good. <laughs> they did, yeah. No, here we are, yeah. Uh, Forty to seven win over Syracuse. Uh, Drake May over four hundred yards. Um, yeah, they got a they got a big one of their own next week against an opponent, which we will talk about here in just a second. We'll get to them. Oregon State, a big shootout win of their own, 52-40 over Cal. Um, uh, they're just rolling along since their loss. Ole Miss uh, survived a tough one uh, against o- uh, Arkansas. Arkansas now four losses in a row. Um, they, need to, yeah, they need to keep the, the wheels from falling off there. Um, but yeah. Ole Miss, a couple good bounce backs after the Alabama loss. You know, the emotional win last week and then didn't let that burn them out and uh, won a tough that, one. Because that, that Ole Miss Arkansas over the years has been a crazy game. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's always so, been. You know, yeah, that's the, the famous that, seven overtime ones, the uh, yeah. that the fourth that and paved up our season. <laughs> yeah, that was that fourth and 20 whatever conversion, yeah. that crazy one. Yeah. Um. Yeah, just a a tough series, a wild series, and a good win for Ole Miss. Uh, in Laramie, late night prime time, and on Fox, the the Pokes, Wyoming upset Fresno State. Uh, scored all twenty four of their points in the first half and held on for dear life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Fresno actually had the second longest winning streak in the country at fourteen before. Uh, this loss. So Wyoming, that, again, tough place to play. I, I had them in the picks column. They were an underdog. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's that. one of, yeah. I had them on a, didn't win any parlays this week, but definitely had them because mm-hmm. Laramie is just not a place you can go in and win easily. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah. Teams have and, trouble and, there. And, and that coaching hey, staff has that team playing tough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely good thing. And now, the one ranked team we haven't mentioned that played yesterday, the Miami Hurricanes. Boy, uh, boy. An ugly game, but they took control late over Georgia Tech at home in Miami yeah. or you know wherever they play, and were running out the clock. And then they had a chance to just literally take a knee and let the clock wind down. Instead, they chose to run the ball. They then fumbled the ball. Georgia Tech recovered, and four plays later, Georgia Tech hits a 44-yard touchdown pass to take the lead and win the game. Yeah, uh, seconds. <laughs> it's one I sitting there watching it live. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, um, when he fumbled, I was like, because I was starting to fall asleep a little bit, and I was, uh, he just fumbled that ball. Whoa, trying to wake up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I had it on, trying to get the kid to sleep. And yeah. just maybe not even with the sound on or anything, or just not paying attention to it. It was just kind of like, oh, okay, here they go. But the announcers, I didn't have it on yet because I remember them saying, like, well, why aren't they taking a knee here? And I was just like, ah, you know, he'll just run up the gut or whatever. And no, fumbled, just got stripped. Uh, and you feel bad for the running back, but yeah, why the coaching was, staff? And Cristobal's done this position. before. That's the crazy thing. Mario Cristobal did the same thing at Oregon. Could have kneeled it out against Stanford, ran it. They fumbled. Stanford got the ball, scored a winning touchdown. Uh, I think I saw he was asked about the game, said, yeah, I probably should have stepped in and told him to take a knee. Like, yeah, no shit. You're the head coach. Like, yeah. be aware of the time and the situation. Um, we didn't even mention that in the Alabama game. That, could have, that was a weird mental thing that could have bit Alabama in the ass. They had a chance to. Run the clock out at the end on first down. Jalen Milrow throws a bounce pass to a receiver, which I'm told someone told me afterwards that that was maybe Milrow call because that receiver was uncovered. And yeah. that, that's great. Okay. But you got to make that pass then. Cause if you're, you know, then afterwards everyone's like, oh, that's a heads up play, you know, but yeah. Just, and then the Jace McClellan lucky, you know, lucky that he batted oh. himself up to him and ran for the first See? down. But yeah, yeah. My, Miami was one of the uh, but that's worst losses one you'll those, see in a while. That's what they get for one of those terrible uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like the the Miami Knights uniform. 
That, that was so, like, some of that stuff is cool, but that was just horrendous. Like, I, I don't know. That was terrible. Like, the, the all-black uniforms, they could have done so many cool things with that, and then they just chose the ugliest thing ever. Like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, they were, it was interesting. I, I saw what they are going for. I could appreciate it, but yeah, yeah. I don't think they pulled it off. Um, <laughs> either way, uh, I don't know if Miami fans will ever want to see that uniform again. No. Just that's... because of what happened. Um, that has been bad. And the thing is, they've had issues with Georgia Tech many mm-hmm. times over a couple of seasons where he thought for sure the Canes are going to win. And Georgia Tech, no matter good, bad, and they, they find a way to either beat or hang with the Canes like no other. If there's a game that they get up for, it's that Miami game. Yeah. <laughs> One um, of like, they yeah they, didn't match. they have a bad loss during the Mark Rick years there? Um mm-hmm. I think Georgia Tech beat that shit out of them one time when Mark Rick was there. Uh, but yeah, I think that covers it. Um, unless there's any other games you wanted to talk about from yesterday. Um, I think we... Uh, I don't think, yeah. Anything of note. I guess uh, uh, Colorado got the win. <laughs> yeah, Colorado. Um, late, Deon, late Coach, yeah, Coach Prime said they played like uh, hot garbage. <laughs> Um. Hey, they got to win. Yeah. Getting close to eligibility. <laughs> yeah, four four wins now. Uh, so you know, four times many as last year. Um, we mentioned Texas Tech and Baylor as our disappointing teams of the year. You know, Texas Tech won that win, kind of blew out Baylor in Waco too. Um, you, uh, you mentioned I, TCU got blown out by Iowa State. Well, not blown out, but just not. In that game, really? Yeah. yeah, that's that's a team that fell off hard. <laughs> mm-hmm. A lot of magic last year, and I didn't expect them to be as good, but they're not. They're just losing to everybody this year. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, Texas and OU games might get ugly for them. <laughs> yeah, that can be uh, some interesting games. Uh, so the rankings now, you know, uh, let's see. Uh, everything pretty much stayed the same. Uh, Oklahoma, we mentioned then, they made the big jumps. Um, Louisville Texas. made a couple big Shot. jumps. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, looking forward to next week, some big games. Uh, our Bama boys, they play Arkansas at home. Um, yeah. That's a tough game, but you know, a tricky one after this A and M game, and then mm-hmm. before Tennessee, uh, Arkansas. Like I said, they're a desperate team now. They've lost four in a row, and they don't want the wheels to fall off. So Alabama can't sleep on them. No, not at um, all. It's tough. Not to, yeah, <laughs> tough game. Mm-hmm. We should be fine, but you know, just want to stay on top of things. Mm-hmm. Not let them. Not listen to anybody. No rap poison. <laughs> we should Mm-mm. be good. Uh, of course, next week's main event will be number Ooh. eight Oregon at number seven Washington. A uh, rivalry game. Um, two, you know, the Pac-12 leaders, uh, Michael Penix Jr., a Heisman candidate, uh, winner of this one. You know, still got a tough road ahead of them, but it definitely gives the inside track to at least make that Pac-12 title game. Um. Is that a one of the? Is that the big noon? Are they doing that, or is that two thirty? Two thirty eight. That's good. That's yeah. a good. Uh, Pac twelve has some very interesting games next week. Um, you know, of course, that the main eventer, um, you know, Arizona Washington State could be interesting. Uh, USC Notre Dame, uh, UCLA mm-hmm. at Oregon State. I mean, that's an interesting slate of games. <laughs> You know, uh, especially at USC, I mean, they're going into South Bend, uh, you know, Irish coming off that tough loss. But, man, if uh, that defense, who, who knows what what, uh, what that'll look like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and actually, Notre Dame favored at opening line, a two-and-a-half point favorite. So that's uh... – yeah, interesting week. Yeah. You mentioned did you mention UCLA going to Oregon State? Yeah, that'll um, be Yeah. That's now a top twenty five matchup, UCLA in the rankings now. 18, 15. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's a good, good week for the for the Pac-12 final season. <laughs> big yeah. Weekend. Um, other big games. Let's see next week. I just had one. Well, it would have been a matchup of unbeaten ACC teams had Miami just not done the dumbest shit yeah. we've seen. Um, I mean, seriously, still- Mario, Mario Cristobal wins this week's dumb motherfucker award. Um, that. I do just the arrogance of it. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. this, especially when you've had it happen before. Yeah, and that's the thing. <laughs> uh, you you've got to you've got to be hyper aware of that now. Like, you can't. I know you got coaches and they're here, but on game days, as a head coach, when you don't call plays and Chris Ball doesn't, like that's your job. Like to be aware of situations like that. To be yelling yeah. in your headset at your guys, like take a knee, victory formation, whatever the hell your code for it is. Like, yeah. you've got to be just adamant that that is what is going to happen there in that situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, Miami should be, like I said, they should be heading into Chapel Hill for an unbeaten showdown, a huge game. Instead, now they it's a more of a desperation game. Um, still yeah. a huge game, but not huge quite game, as big now. Yeah. Second, yeah, you lose a second ACC game, you're, you're, out, of the con- you're out of the conference championship pretty mm-hmm. much. Yeah, no, no room for error for the Canes now. Um, and North Carolina, big spot for them still, though. Yeah. Um, I mentioned you'll see uh, Notre Dame. Let's see. Duke uh, host NC State next week. I uh, we talked about Missouri has to rebound from – in Kentucky, they'll both, you know, rebound from their losses. They play in Lexington. Um, it's kind of that some... five second, second in the East. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, that's a big one. You know, one of those teams, you know, a team like Kentucky could still run the table. Mm-hmm. Um, one loss and maybe not get into but, the playoff, but that's, you know, a New Year's Six Bowl. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could see both those teams winning. The, mm-hmm. I mean, they very well. Well, Missouri still at Georgia, so, yeah, probably not likely. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. You know that, uh, you know, Texas A&M at Tennessee, that could be interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, Tennessee after a bye back. week, right? Yeah. See how the Aggies bounce back. But I will say Tennessee is a much better team at home. Like, when they go mm-hmm. on the road, they are kind of questionable. But at home, they've been – the last two years have been lights out. Mm-hmm. You know, they've had all their stress and losses on the road there, uh, whether it be last year at Georgia, uh, you know, this year at – in. They've held it down, so we'll see. Yeah, and um, you know that's uh, their passing game is it hasn't been as prolific as it was last year, but they've found some balance in that offense and running the ball. They have to run the ball decently. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, that should be an interesting game. Um, uh, another game that's one of those anything could a- absolutely happen in the game. Auburn and LSU. It's time for that game. Uh, it's in Baton Rouge. Uh, you would think maybe that Auburn defense not being as good as they're used to. Maybe LSU just might throw it all over them, and they might anyway, but who the hell knows what will happen on the other side of the ball. Um, yeah, you know, you would think if there's a cure for your defense struggling, it's the Auburn offense, but who knows? And vice versa. <laughs> and vice versa. If, if you, Peyton Thorns exactly. had a – season the LSU defense is your best opportunity to put your put a game together so who knows who yeah knows? and if you know if Hugh Freeze is this offensive genius as much as everyone says he is this is the kind of game that he's got to see that tape of whatever is wrong with the LSU defense and exploit it yeah. um <laughs> so that you know 6 p.m ESPN game when that'll be an interesting one to watch um other than that not much going on we mentioned Bam and Arkansas that's an 11 a.m game uh Georgia and Vanderbilt, the rare 11 a.m. CBS game. Um, poor Vanderbilt. Uh, Michigan gets Indiana. Ohio State travels to Purdue. Florida State hosts Syracuse. Utah hosts Cal. Uh, Penn State hosts Massachusetts. That line opened at 42 points, and I still don't know if that's high enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, Kansas goes into Oklahoma State now. That's uh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, see if Oklahoma State can keep their momentum from that big win over Kansas State going. 
Right. Um, Louisville follows up their win with a trip to Pitt. Pitt not good this year, but still kind of that's one of those tricky games. Um, I'm kind of shocked. Pitt. It actually is like mm-hmm. I've been. I know they've lost a couple of things, but man, they're they're not good. No, yeah, I they mean, do just do not look good this year at all. I mean, they lost Vodcek. That that sums it up right there. Um, mm-hmm. Coming off the line, so maybe that'll help them out a little bit. But yeah, I, I don't know. I think I would think Louisville should win, but you yeah, never know. You would. You would think, especially, you know, as well coaches they seem to be now. Um, yeah. Hopefully, you know, you would think Braum gets his guys uh, focused. Um, mm. uh, kind of, a, you know, the records don't show, but that Coastal and App, App State play on Tuesday this week. A couple of. I uh, mean, that'll be. That's not, yeah. That should be a fun it's, one. It's usually a fun one. Yeah, that one's in Boone this year. Yeah. Um, the Dana Holgerson Bowl on Thursday that West Virginia travels that, to Houston. That it is. Um, and there's there's a big uh, American matchup on Friday. Tulane travels to Memphis. Um, both of those teams four and one and one and zero oh overall in the American Athletic Conference. So that's a, that's kind of a big one for that conference right there. Damn right there. Um, yeah, Colorado plays Stanford, a game they should absolutely win to get to five wins. Yeah, yeah uh, I think that's pretty much it for notable games next week. Oh, wait, here's a, a big fun belt one, another early Saturday game. Uh, Georgia Southern at James Madison. That that'd be interesting. Yeah, that's on ESPN too. That's worth keeping on your multi view if you got YouTube TV there, folks. Uh, the only thing that I don't like about that multi view is you can't pick which ones you want to look at. Yeah, that does work. I read something about that. And I think it's what I read was the explanation is so they have like, you know, servers or whatever that it was very technical, but they host it and it would just essentially, I don't think the technology really exists for people to be able to pick them and then have all of those different combinations from around the country. Right. I don't know. Some, uh, some weeks are great and you're for it and some weeks you're like, damn, I won one from here, one from here. Like the 11 o'clock yesterday was perfect because they had... They had LSU, they had the uh, Red River, and mm-hmm. then they had uh, the Ohio State Maryland game all on the same thing. So I was like, "This yeah. is that." <laughs> and then they had Mississippi State in the corner, but they there was a lot of points scored, so it was somewhat interesting. But those were the three I was like, I, "Those are the three I was definitely excited for in that eleven o'clock window." And they had them all on the same same one, so that that made my eleven o'clock <laughs> great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I wonder if it's something to do with maybe contracts too, because yeah, I don't know if the Alabama A and M game was even on a multi view or Yeah. Um It seems to be a Fox and ESPN thing mainly. Yeah. But I, um, I, I, Yeah, who knows? It's weird. Um that should be it. Anything else for college? No. No. Nah. Right, moving it. on to the NFL. Uh what's going on today? Let's see. Um I've debated on if I wanted to spend 20 minutes cursing the Ravens and I just, <laughs> I don't, I'm over it. Uh, it's a dumb, <laughs> dumb loss to the Steelers in a game, which they dominated all game. That offense, the Steelers offense looked like trash. Their crowd was chanting fire Canada, you know, to Matt Canada's offense coordinator. And then the Ravens just gave up an 80 yard drive to lose the game. Um, dumb decisions all around. I, again, I, I've, had my John Harbaugh rants before, but again, he just makes dumb decisions. And every time the problem with the Ravens lately, the past few years is their losses aren't, you know, teams losing in NFL. You can accept that. Okay. Everyone loses. It's fine, but it's not like they just get beat. Okay. That team was better. They just got beat, you know, like, or they like, Oh, well, you know, we gave it our best shot. It's always like these dumb decisions and like, the, the recap articles you read are always like Ravens shoot themselves in the foot or this dooms Ravens, you know, Steelers steal a game. Like, and it's so annoying. Like John Harbaugh in the early in the late in the second half, fourth and two with like 10 seconds ago, instead of trusting, you know, Justin Tucker, the best kicker ever and taking three easy points to go up 10 at halftime, they decide to go for it on fourth and two and don't get it. No points late in the game after they get a, uh, 
they recover a fumble in the punt. You know, the, the Steelers got some momentum. They forced a punt, and then the guy fumbles it, so the Ravens get it back. They get down, and they have, what, third and goal from the five, and instead of maybe running it twice or running it and then kicking the field goal, you know, taking some more time off the clock, they throw a goal line fade, which the bane of my existence. <laughs> I cannot stand a goal line fade, and what it gets picked off. It was a bad throw. That one was on Lamar, but uh, it just – so dumb stuff and just dumb decisions. It's and mm. it seems like the team doesn't have the fight that they used to have in them. And I've said it once. I've said it. I'll say it again. I just think as good as John Har- John Harbaugh is a good coach. I can admit that. I think he's overrated. But you know, like everyone talks about, he's got a Super Bowl. That was over ten years ago, and he's only won two playoff games since. So. Um, <laughs> I, I will say this. You know, it wasn't all on him, of course, but um. You know, I think the Ravens had like five, six drops today. They dropped two to three potential touchdowns. They dropped two passes in the end zone. Uh, receivers had bad games. Um, dropped another pass that would have been a touchdown. Um, so, yeah, just a bad game overall. Um, but uh, it just I, – like I was saying, with Harbaugh, I think all good things come to an end sometimes. And just – yeah, I think it's time the Ravens just need a new era – of leadership, just play this year out, whatever. I, I just sometimes you just need a fresh coat of paint. There's nothing wrong with the old one. You just need something fresh. And yeah, maybe Michigan State can hire John Harbaugh, and him and his brother can fight it out in college. Yeah. Who knows? Um, I'm just tired. These are dumb losses. Yeah. Uh, elsewhere in the NFL, let's see. Uh, Jacksonville got Buffalo this morning in London. Yeah. Um, Ruin my parlay early. <laughs> Nothing worse than losing a parlay oh, before. The- <laughs> oh, man. I must say before the day even uh, yeah. kicks off. Yeah. Um, Not that yeah. Bad. Bills, Unfortunate. That Bill's money line, nothing extravagant. <laughs> I didn't have, but. Uh, yeah, let's see where else. Uh, Falcons beat Texans. Ho hum. Uh, the Lions continue to look oh. good. Uh, beat up on the Panthers. Mm-hmm. Um, the Panthers. Poor Bryce Young. Yeah, long year there. Um, mm-hmm. But that end of that uh, Texans uh, Falcons game was pretty crazy. Looked like yeah. CJ pulled it out, <laughs> and then Falcons able to go back down the field. Um, Kick the yeah the walk off field goal to Desmond Ritter probably his best game as a pro. It was. Um, sure. What do you know? Look at that. Kyle Pitts seven receptions, eighty seven yards. When you actually See, throw to Kyle. the guy, good things happen. Obviously, they listen to our podcast. <laughs> hey, <laughs> <laughs> we have Kyle Pitts, arguably one of the top tight ends in the NFL. Mm-hmm. A guy we drafted at what number four overall? Like the, the reason before- you guys. <laughs> yeah, before this game, he had 17 targets all season. That's ridiculous. Yeah. You have to throw the ball to him or trade him, do whatever. Uh, Colts beat the Titans. Uh, Jonathan Taylor back, signed that extension this week. So I guess fences are mended there. Yeah. Uh, Dolphins, uh, easy win over the Giants. And uh, speaking of rough times for uh, Alabama quarterbacks, former Alabama quarterbacks, Mac Jones benched again. The Saints just just down thirty four nothing. Patriots just look bad. Um, Two weeks yeah, in a row, just uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's rough on Mac, and he's not playing great either. But he has no help there. That line was getting just pushed around. His receivers cannot create separation. To Today, there's nothing. That is officially the worst NFL starting wide receiver core I've ever seen. Mm, yeah, it's bad. I wouldn't uh, want that in my practice. <laughs> no, they're, they're not good. Um, like what? What is this? Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, going on this late window here, the Eagles. Uh, they appear to be about to put this one away against the Rams. Uh, the Bengals have found their offense against the Cardinals. Um, teams yeah. tend to do that. Uh, Joe Burrow over three hundred yards, three touchdowns. Um, the Jets are winning the Nathaniel Hackett revenge game right now. Uh, early in the fourth, they're up eight. 
Russell Wilson's um, having a tough day out there. I think he has like 80 yards passing, yeah. a couple picks. It's, <laughs> it's rough. Not- um, and the Chiefs and Vikings, they're playing a good one. The Vikings hanging around with the Chiefs. Um, yeah, that Travis, one is in Minnesota. Yeah, Travis Kelsey went out there with that injury. And look, oh. and those injuries where you're by yourself and get hurt, those usually aren't, don't end well. So, yeah. The um, inter- crazy you always to hate to see that. Because if he's out for the year, I mean, let's hope he's not. But if he is, that changes everything for Ken. Even if they win today, that changes everything for that team because they're a team that doesn't have the best wide receiver core. We saw them week one without Travis Kelsey, and it wasn't the prettiest. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Um, if he, yeah, if he's out for a significant amount of time, you would think that they would do. They're going to give up some draft capital for a receiver trade somewhere. Um, <laughs> I tell you what, I wouldn't like. I mean, I would like him in purple and black better. But if I'm the KC general manager, I'm going to call Denver and see what I can do to get Jerry Judy off your hands. Um, Mm -hmm. He needs to be safe in that situation. They need a guy that can be a number one receiver and a good route runner. And he is, I think him catching passes from Mahomes could be good. I don't know if Denver would want to give him to a division rival. But, uh, yeah, KC would need to do something to get themselves a, a top pass catcher. Um. Cause this we'll team, how, they said, have, "Oh, Kelsey's back!" So, oh, well, there we go. Oh, yep, I see him right there, eighty-seven on the field here. Well, well, I mean, still, maybe you might want to trade for a better receiver. Yeah. Um just because you see that that's a possibility, and you don't yeah. want to go multiple game. Because even with even with Mahomes, you know, you got you got to have at least one star out there. But yeah, it looks like. Uh, Kelsey's out there, so that gets a little premature on our end. But yeah, well, speaking you know, of, they just showed a replay. It looked like Justin Jefferson might have tweaked his hammy or something. Yeah. Um, hey, that's not good news for Vikings fans at all. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, so you know things holding pat. You know, Bills lost. It's the NFL that kind of a good win for Jacksonville. They kind of needed that one. They did um, that. They did that. Um, and it's one of those games. What's the name? Uh, jo- Josh Allen. That's a guy that, if I'm a, if I were a Bills fan, sometimes he's the most frustrating dude in the NFL. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. some there's weeks, like when he had that uh, the I, I think it was pick. Uh, they were go- going up the field. He kind of threw it in the double coverage toward the end zone, got intercepted, and that kind of iced it a little bit. I mean, but. And then, but then he, after they gave up the touchdown, then he came back to cut it to five. He had a perfect little drive. Mm-hmm. Like some days, you see the hype and why he's, why people revere him where he's at. And then others, it's like, dude, <laughs> what, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. You just, a headache. <laughs> if I'm yeah. a fan, I'm always a little worried about where, where he's at because. When he's off, like sometimes he's just bad. Still, <laughs> um, yeah, that running game of theirs hasn't gotten going like I think a lot of people mm-hmm. hoped it would there this year. And they gave up a plethora of running yards today. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it was good for my family. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, your Cowboys tonight, big game yeah. going into. And- San Francisco or Santa Clara, actually, but playing the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, how do you feel about it? You know, it's one of those games like, yeah. You, I mean, I'm just happy right now it's not a playoff one because we've had some <laughs> tough couple of years to them in the playoffs there. As then what finish. But, you know, I just, even if we do lose the game, I just, you know, I just want to be able to stay right with them there, go blow to blow with them there, get an idea of, honestly, the best team in the NFC. How do we stack up against them? You know, just see where we're at. Um, you know, our biggest thing, and of course, we saw a lot last year. We saw with uh, two weeks ago when a weird one in the loss to Arizona, couldn't stop the run to save our lives. <laughs> want to see what we do today against Christian McCaffrey. He's having an MVP season so far. You know, do we, can we shut him down at all? 
Or does he run all over us? You know, so we'll see. That's kind of, you know, I just want to hang with him, see what we do. Um, and, you know, the biggest thing for on us offensively, I mean, we, we moved the ball. Got, gonna have to score touchdowns to beat uh beat uh, San Francisco. If you, that defense is great, you get in the red zone, you have to score a touchdown to beat them. Field goal is not gonna get it done. They're just that good of a team right now. So mm-hmm. we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Monday night's matchup is Green Bay and Las Vegas. So ho hum there. That's terrible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's it. Uh, you know, NFL moves on. We really don't start seeing a lot of movement too. You know, like l- mid November is when things really start. Yeah, right around Thanksgiving is when you uh-huh. kind of really starts getting serious and yeah, really heat up. Uh-oh. Our matter and winning and teams kind of catch who they're gonna be. Uh-huh. Um, you got Patrick Mahomes, at far edge. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, a little trick play here on. Okay, oh, no, nope, they're going <laughs> to. Call the timeout. Yep. Uh, all right, let's see. Um, Major League Baseball playoffs started this week. Uh, wild card rounds were all two game sweeps. Uh, well, not eventful at all. <laughs> no, Rangers beat the Rays, Twins beat the Blue Jays, Phillies beat the Marlins, D backs beat the Brewers. Um, so, you know, a couple upsets in there with the Rangers over the Rays and D backs over Brewers. Uh, then we had the division series start, and it's the a lot of the the road teams. I think what three of them won wow. yesterday. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the Astros are the only favorite and home team to win yesterday. The uh, Rangers went into Baltimore and won Game One of that series. Um, they're currently up, up ten to five in the seventh right now. Yeah. Um, you know, so Baltimore, Cinderella, kind of years uh, fizzing out. Uh, Rangers, at, you know, one point in the season, you know, they had the best offense in the league, and you know, they had their ups and downs, mm-hmm. but they fought hard for in that AL West against the Astros. Um, yeah, and they will play later at seven. Uh, the Twins and Astros game two there. Uh, Phillies shut out the Braves yesterday. Uh, first time the Braves has been shut out since May, and the first time they were shut out at home all year. Um, mm. Just a weird block. The Braves and the Phillies in the playoffs. Braves just can't get over it. Um, yeah, It's just a weird thing. Spencer Strider, 8-0 against the Phillies in his regular season career. The Braves have won all eight of the games, obviously. Um, they never lost when he started against the Phillies. Uh, this is now 0-2. <laughs> In the playoffs for him, uh, not as last year was a bad one on his part. He pitched very well yesterday. The Braves' offense just got shut down. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and what you really don't want to see if you're a Braves fan because the Phillies used like seven pitchers in that game, it's like yeah. a bullpen game almost. And now you're going against uh Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nolan the next two games. So, nice. tomorrow yeah. night, a must win game if you're the Braves. You have to go oh. in the Philly split. You don't want to go to 0 2. Yeah, you don't want to go 0 uh-uh. 2 in the Philly at all. <laughs> um, then the late game last night, woo, the Oof. D-backs jumped on the Dodgers. They were up, what, 6 nothing before the Dodgers even got an out. Yeah. Uh, Clayton Kershaw didn't even make it out of the first inning. No. Um, <coughs> excuse me, 11-2 no, to final score. You know, that's kind of been his MO in the playoffs. <laughs> Over the, No matter mm-hmm. – Kind of falls apart in the playoffs. <laughs> so yeah, caught um, an embarrassing thing himself. So that that'd be interesting to see how the Dodgers regroup there. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming they will, but man, that's a crazy way to start. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's like we said. We got to see how all these uh, home team favorites respond. Uh, yeah. Like we said, right now the Orioles not doing great. You I'm, know, down ten yeah. five. Uh, seven. Bottom seven, um, with now just now two outs, and just see it popped up. So they're down their last seven outs. Um, mm. They don't want to, you know, they got to claw back here. Yeah, they may. They don't win today. They may not make it out. They may not see another game in Baltimore. <laughs> no, yeah. I um, think that. The silver lining of that, though, is that's a young team with a lot of stars. They still got guys in the minors that could come up mm-hmm. and help them. Exactly. Uh, 
you do bring up questions why they they didn't get more help in their pitching staff at the deadline or at least better help. I don't think Jack Flaherty has been good for them at all. Um, and you could say the same thing about the Braves. You know, that's their struggle. Although yesterday, again, like I said, Spencer Strider pitched great. Um, just didn't. Um, controversial call. That weird catcher's interference call on the replay. It kind of mm-hmm. looked like he didn't touch him at all. That gave the Phillies an extra run. But the Braves just didn't take – they had their opportunities. They left a lot of guys on base. Um, as the O's uh, get another out. So they're down their last six outs in this game, mm. trying to avoid going down 0 2. Um, like I said, Twins and Strohs played tonight. The NL teams play their game twos tomorrow. Uh, let's see. Anything from the world of sports you want to hit on that we missed? I think, I think we pretty much covered everything. You said it best. It's a beautiful time of the year. You know, play all baseball. Deep in car football, um, NFL starting to heat up. Um, um, hockey starts this week for your NHL fans. Mm-hmm. I, I love playoff hockey, the regular season. Eh. <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's a slog, and you know I've been as I grew up playing defense in the game too. So I, the new rules and all the weird overtime yeah. shootout stuff. That's that. Ties are okay, guys. It's it's fine yeah. in the regular season to have a tie, get exactly. it over with. Exactly. Um, I will say uh, Premier League little soccer action. Huge game today. Huge win for my Gunners. Arsenal one nothing over Manchester City. A late winner uh, from Gab Martinelli. Um, huge win for their confidence, too. They were without their best player, Mikayo Saka. Still managed to win. Um, nice. First time they've beat Manchester City in the league since 2016, I believe. Um, That's it's a huge. big game, yeah, huge game over there in England. Uh, uh, still a lot of lot of uh season left there though. They've only played eight mm-hmm. games out of thirty eight, so but that does put Arsenal tied at top of the uh, Premier League. Uh, going into an international break. Uh, but yeah, I do believe that is everything. Like I said, no new trades this week. Nothing really. Uh, no off the field stuff to really speak of. Um, WNBA finals. The Aces took game one. Yeah. Um. Uh, Aja Wilson's just, you know, huge. Just. <laughs> She's a star. Great player. <laughs> yeah, just a star. Um, but yeah, so with that said, Greg, what has been done up real good for you this week? You know, done up for me real good. Yeah, I'm just going to keep it Alabama related. You know, uh, this whole time I've been a big Jalen Monroe guy um, from the get go. And, you know, the yesterday just, uh, you know, I was, I was proud of him. <laughs> you know, I don't know him for anything, but, you know, just. Some of what he's been through, and it's just going to roll like that. And the game was on his shoulders, and he just handled business. So, for me, that that was something big for the week. <laughs> How about you? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, me uh, getting some home projects finished and stuff. You know, we. Uh, oh yeah. You you buy a hundred some year old house like we did. You got mm-hmm. a lot of stuff. So mm-hmm. you can on the camera see behind me there. That is a door <laughs> that we've put in our office now. Um, it used to be when we first moved in here, the only way you could get to the backyard was through the bathrooms, which is oh, really wow. weird to us. So now we have a a door in our office that goes out to our new fin- finally finished deck in our right. finished yard with you know all the plants we want and the fence and all that and our tool shed. Right. So just feels good now. All the projects on my honeydew list are more <laughs> small Found stuff, you know. Fix a closet yeah. here, yeah. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, that just kind of feels good. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. And that's yeah. the one thing. So, uh, we got an older, well, not as old, but an older house. I think it's built in the 60s. It's always something. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, um, but the bigger, small, it's always something that can get fixed. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mentioned last week, you know, the HVAC thing, but we got, you know, insurance coming good. through on that. And yeah, yeah just, oh, uh, yeah, there's always something. Yeah. Like I said, our, I think our next one is, we want to move uh, one of the bathrooms. It's a three bathroom place. We're going to turn one of them into a laundry room. And, uh, 
Oh, okay. But that should that won't be too bad of a project. Plumbing's already there, so. But yeah, uh, that does it for us. Uh, good week here for sports. As we said, we are getting into really just a great time of year for sports fans with for college sure. and pro football. Uh, getting right into the meat of it. Uh, baseball sure. playoffs, NBA and NHL seasons about to start. Um, can't really ask for much more. Uh, thank no, you once again for listening. Uh, do subscribe and give us some good ratings. Tell your friends who you think would be interested. <laughs> Tell your rich friends about us. And check out all of the great podcasts on the Alabama Take family of podcasts like Taking It Down, Alabama Slam. Uh, I'm sure Mal will have another uh, good podcast coming out in the <laughs> stare down. Another good old Miss win uh, for her. Um, but yeah, and as always, you can check out the alabamatake.com for writings. That's where uh, Blaine and Mal and myself do our picks column every Friday. Uh, I think I had a three in one weekend, so that's pretty nice. good. Nice. Um, not sure how Blaine and Mal did. I haven't checked, but you can check <laughs> it out. Like I said, the alabamatake.com. And as always, keep it done up real good yourselves out there. Greg, take it easy, man. Yes, sir. Thank you.